Good evening, everyone, and welcome to uh, Paul C. Pease and a Pint on the State of Post-Secondary Education in Manitoba. Uh, Paul C. Pease and a Pint is part of the Citizen Series at the Manitoba Institute for Policy Research. I am Robert Ermel, and I'm the Director of Operations for MIPR. Uh, we do these uh, series to enhance public dialogue and to engage people in public policy discussions uh, in a broader way than would otherwise occur um, just at the university. So we're very, happy, very thankful to be out here today. And I mean, thankfully, you guys all came out in this weather uh, where it's 22 above and sunny, and instead of sharing it here to talk about the state of post secondary education. Um, it gives me great pleasure to uh, introduce our panel this evening. Um, we've got uh, three distinguished panelists and uh, a wonderful moderator. Um, our panelists are Dr. Marlene Atlio. She is the Associate Professor in the Faculty of Education at the University of Manitoba. She teaches Aboriginal and Cross Cultural Education in the BEd program and adult and post-secondary education in the MED and PhD programs. Her current research focus is on cross-cultural, Aboriginal, and adult learning for the post-secondary education across the disciplines during structural shifts in society and economy. Our second panelist this evening is Dr. Andrea Rounds. She is an assistant professor in the Department of Political Studies at the University of Manitoba and the academic director for the Manitoba Institute for Policy Research. The areas in which she teaches and researches include public administration, citizen engagement, and post-secondary education. <laughs> Wait for it, yeah. Andrea has worked on post-secondary education issues as a student, a student leader, a policy advisor for government, and as an academic. Our last panelist, last, last but not least, is Dr. Curtis Norton. He is the chair of the Council on Post-Secondary Education, which he joined in 2006 as acting secretary to the council. He has taught for several years at the University of Winnipeg, was the Dean of Continuing Education and the Executive Director of the College Expansion Initiative. In addition to his role as a Chair of Council, he does independent consulting work in the field of post-secondary education. Our moderator this evening is Mary Agnes Welch. Mary Agnes Welch joined the Winnipeg Free Press in 2002, first as a general assignment reporter, and then covering City Hall and the Manitoba Legislature before moving to her current post as public policy reporter. So please join me in welcoming everybody to tonight's discussion. Um, on your tables or feedback forums, if there's other topics or areas of issue or anything else that you'd like us to know, please feel free to feed them out and fill them out and we'll uh, make sure that we uh, look at those topics or address your concerns as necessary. So thank you again for coming on this wonderful evening and please enjoy the discussion. I was only allowed to find issues, and 
So I'll, I'll do eight challenges and, and one major issue. So that's, that's what I mean by less and more. So let's begin with the, the, the big central issue that I see. And I think that the, uh, the biggest uh, immediate long-term problem that we're facing uh, is one of sustainability for the, for the post-secondary system. This is a system that's, that's absolutely vital uh, to the province uh, for economic development for a whole host of reasons. It's absolutely vital uh, to individuals in terms of their personal transformation. So it's a really fundamental service that's provided here. And as you'll see as I go through some of my challenges, I think it's, it's uh, uh, a system that's, that uh, is facing some really rough times in the next few years because there are just a whole host of pressures that uh, are destabilizing it. So let me just go through uh, six or seven or eight of these uh, kinds of issues. The first one that you hear uh, of, from uh, senior uh, university and college uh, officers would certainly be government funding. Government funding is still the major source of, of revenue for these institutions. And in this province, we spend very close to $800 million dollars uh, on our post-secondary system, so it's by far, you know, it's far from an insignificant investment. Um, I, I think that over the last decade, uh, the institutions have done relatively well. Uh, in, um, by the way of the grants that have been provided, uh, you might not uh, you might not come to that conclusion because of the university presidents, but uh, I, I think it's, it's fair to say that they've done fairly well. If you just take, uh, for example, the University of Winnipeg, uh, between 2001 and 2012, uh, their, uh, their grant rose from $29 million to $54 million. It's roughly an 86% uh, increase in, uh, uh, in the funding, uh, during which time enrollments rose by 36%. So in, in relative terms, uh, I think that they do well, well funded. But the demands on the system uh, continue to grow, and funding has been constrained, and will probably be constrained further in the future. If you take a look at the, the total government envelope, uh, the expansion of health uh, expenditures has been really, really dramatic over the last 25 or 30 years. And uh, there are many of us that, that see that that process will continue, which to me says that we will further see constraints placed upon uh, the kind of funding the government can uh, provide to the uh, to post-secondary institutions. It was, I think, with the greatest of, of, of reluctance, and, and I think it was a true disappointment for government uh, a year ago when they had to renege on the promise of 5% and, and go to 2.5%. Uh, when you look at the 2.5% uh, across the country, it's still uh, one of the largest increases that the institutions uh, got in this country, but it was still not uh, the kind of investment that the government had hoped to make, uh, a government that was very much committed to um, this particular sector. A corollary of this, of course, is tuition. And tuition was uh, frozen for the best part of the decade, and now is uh, uh, allowed to increase at, at a highly regulated rate. Um, in other jurisdictions where government grants have been uh, modest, the uh, institutions have had the ability to raise tuition uh, at fairly dramatic levels. Not so here. So the, the grant tuition uh, combination is one that uh, spells some difficulty for the institutions. Another item here that uh, I don't think too many people think of is, is demographic change. And I think that this is highly worrisome, particularly for the universities. Uh, if you take a look at some of the statistics that the Medical Bureau of Statistics puts out, uh, enrollments uh, running out to about uh, 2019 uh, are projected to decline from about uh, 37,000 to 32,000. That's a really significant factor that's in the pipeline. And it explains to some degree uh, all of the activity the institutions are engaged in and trying to increase participation rates, trying to tap into groups that have, not, that have been underrepresented within the system uh, over the last number of years, 
and certainly uh, in terms of the international market. Um, it, it's a, a very difficult thing to, uh, to increase participation rate, but uh, those are the efforts that are being made. Uh, and it's, it's starting to create, uh, as I'll, I'll point out later, uh, more and more competition amongst, uh, amongst institutions at a time when I think cooperation is really the thing that's, that's required. Um, we don't have a lot of data on this yet, these are projections, but uh, Ontario, uh, Ontario statistics uh, uh, indicate that last year their enrollments uh, from the high school system uh, from the high school system dropped by 3%. So we're starting to see those numbers and they will become more difficult as we go along. Technology is another problem. Technology is very expensive. And I think the technology piece uh, operates on two levels. One is simply the acquisition of the, the computer power within the institutions, the development of smart classrooms, all of that kind of, uh, of uh, capital acquisition, if I could put it that way. And the other piece of it that's, that's uh, really difficult is the online competition that's out there. And that's beginning to, uh, to chip away at, at, at certain key pieces of the system. Um, the online programs that are out there tend to be focusing on things about business, which are programs which actually the institutions can a fair bit of money off of and use to cross subsidize into uh, into the system. So that kind of competition is, is, is uh, becoming uh, uh, more pronounced and is pecking away at, at, a, at a key economic uh, cornerstone of the institution. Another item that uh, rarely is, is commented on but is becoming a truly big item, uh, and that's pensions. Pensions generally uh, are across the country are, are an issue, uh, especially public service pensions. But they become they become a big issue for institutions. The uh, University of Winnipeg is the first uh, of the institutions to really uh, encounter serious difficulties, but the other institutions are not far away from uh, being in exactly the same situation. And just to contextualize it at the moment, the University of Winnipeg is, is having to access uh, provincial loan authority to uh, maintain uh, the base of its pension plan to the tune of two million dollars. Uh, this is something that it is, it's, it's a bit of a time bomb that's kicking away in the system. The final issue, and I didn't mean to, uh, to say that, that, that uh, the issues that I'm presenting are, are, are all of the issues. There's many more, and I've talked to uh, my colleagues on the panel here, and I know that they're going to be raising additional issues that, that, that will actually support this whole notion of, of the, uh, uh, the system becoming uh, uh, stressed. But I wanted to touch on the, the notion of the decline of uh, arts and science. A lot of the data that's out there right now is American data, but it, it clearly indicates that particularly the arts, but generally speaking, the arts and sciences uh, are in, in a period of decline. And that's to say, as a percentage, uh, the, the enrollments in most, in most faculties as a percentage of total enrollments in institutions has been shrinking out for, uh, for a little while. Um, Canadian data is more difficult to find, but again, if you go to uh, Ontario, uh, you can see that uh, in the last year, uh, or going from 04 to, uh, to 14, uh, the arts and enrollments have declined in that province by 11%. Now, that will present certain kinds of problems for institutions that are primarily arts and science based. So I'm thinking of Brandon University, I'm thinking of University of Quebec. This is going to be a particular problem. Often what it does, again, is send them out scurrying, looking for other program areas, and those other program areas tend to be areas that are, are pre-existing in the system. Now, when they've entered into some of those areas, uh, I don't think that they have created a, an undue problem in the short term, but as the demographic decline that I referred to earlier starts to bite, I think that we will find that perhaps some of these uh, programs that are important to other institutions start to become undermined by this kind of unregulated activity. So I could go on on this, as I say, but uh, I think that you get my point. Uh, the system is increasingly stressed. 
uh, I, I think that healthy organizations, healthy institutions can take on uh, a modest number of problems. They may be able to take on two or three or four or five significant problems. Well, I just outlined eight, and I think my colleagues here will outline some more. And that suggests to me that the range of problems that the institutions are facing are, are, are getting to a, a point of being overwhelming. Therefore, I think we have to uh, start to rethink our system a bit. I think we need to try and find ways in, in which we uh, stimulate and foster cooperation and collaboration amongst the institutions. We need to find ways of finding efficiencies uh, within our institutions. Uh, and if we don't, then I don't think we're going to have these institutions. They are going to be truly in, 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 uh, in great danger. So uh, that's my big picture based upon some, some of the smaller pieces. Uh, I think we're going into a period of greater competition at the very point in which uh, a new minister is talking about uh, better coordination of the system, uh, a more systemic approach. And uh, I think we've got a lot of work to do over the next uh, three or four or five years to try and uh, ensure that what, in my view, is an absolutely vital service uh, for individuals and our province is healthy and able to rise to the challenge.